this video, I will be discussing the redistricting in all 50 states because I haven't done a video for that in a very long time. So let's get started right into today's video. So in this video, I'll be basically talking about state from state that has redistricting and talking about the overall results and things like that. So let's talk about it overall in general. Republicans currently hold a one seat advantage. And the most notable thing I can see is that um, Democrats have gained double digits amount of seats, 10 seats compared to the own maps. Now, Democrats are expected to lose maybe one or two seats in Florida. One seat probably in New Hampshire, possibly, um, maybe lose one or two in Florida. Missouri's going to stay the same, it looks like. So, yeah. Now, so it looks like Democrats overall are benefiting a little bit. And, yeah, so I'm going to be starting from some of these states here. And I'm just going to be taking a look at all the maps, all right? So, Washington State. This is the first state that has... Um, I guess several districts we're going to be talking about it from the West Coast. Not much of change from the old map, honestly. You can see not a lot of change changes. Kim Schrader's district basically stayed the same. You know, uh, the partisan lanes, they haven't changed by a huge amount. Even the color shadings, even if they change, it's only a 2% swing in the first district. So not much to talk about in the state of Washington. Now let's go to another state. Um, down here in the state of Oregon, Oregon, looking at the state of Oregon, um, there is a additional seat in Oregon right now. It looks like it's benefiting the, the Democrats, of course, Republicans have the seat that is becoming, has became 10 points more Republican, but overall, this is a definitely a map that favors the Democrats. Looking at the change here, plus two Democrat cleaning seats, minus one highly competitive seat. So you can see that Democrats are benefiting from the map in Oregon. Um, in California here, it does say minus one Democratic seat, but I would still argue that basically the Democrats, um, at least in my opinion, are benefiting from this new map. All of their incumbents are in Biden plus 10 districts or more. And look at it compared to some of the, the old map. Um, you can see that, you know, the Democrats, they're very strategic in their map drawing. Um, there's not much more competitive seats, honestly. There's only two competitive seats. And the old map was similar, but a lot of Republicans, they're going to have much tougher challenges. Mark Garcia, oh, previously in a D-plus-5 district, now in a D-plus-8 district. Going to Valadeo's district you can see d plus nine to d plus ten but this does affect a lot of the incumbents because these incumbents they only won by about a point in 2020 so that's gonna really be a very crucial thing for them i'm going to i'm not going to be talking about idaho i will talk about montana though montana we do have a seat that's possibly able to flip in a democratic wave election but really that's just that it's basically left right shift here in the state of Nevada. It's in litigation. It's very unlikely going to be struck and stricken down because, honestly, you know, Democrats don't benefit from this map. All right, it's a dummy matter. We have two districts that are very competitive. The fourth district is barely D plus five, so very much a dummy matter. So in 2024 in theory, on 2022 in theory, Republicans can win all four of these districts. In fact, I think Republicans will win at least three of them. In my opinion here in the state of Arizona, we do have a map here that favors the Republicans compared to the old map. The old map gave the Republican Democrats um, three seats, one, and we also have a um, Kirkpatrick seat, also a D plus two seat, very much trending towards the Democrats due to the Tolson area. And we do have a first district in which the Democrats have the incumbency factor. We also have a seat in which the Republicans could possibly flip the seat. Um, the Democrats could possibly flip the seat. Now, the first district, David Schrodinger, it looks like he is the only one that probably doesn't like the new map. Um, on the Republican side, it does make her, his district more competitive, six points more competitive. But um, the twenty, uh, the second district, Tom O'Holland. 
he won in R plus 6 district. Now he's going to have to try and win re-election in R plus 15 district. Not going to win re-election. Similar thing with Ann Patrick. Now in a R plus 7 seat. And even Greg Stanton in a 14 point more Democrat and Republican seat. Still going to face much more opposition here at Colorado. We don't see much, honestly. Just one more highly compact seat. Um, it looks like in Chapter 24, it probably will break 4 to 4. 2020, 4, 2022, 4 to 4. 2024, I think it's still going to break 4 to 4. But sooner or later, this 8th district is trending. Going to trend towards the Democrats. The Democrats probably flip the seat sooner or later. New Mexico, timing matter, you can see, like, really, one of them is D plus 5, one, the other is D plus 4, there's only one s pretty solid Democratic seat, it could, in theory, flip in a very, very good Republican environment, but really, it's these two seats, um, it looks much more like a dummy matter in the old map, though, I thought the Democrats were going to do something like this district, maybe D plus 10, this one D plus 10, and then this one leave it about an even margin to let some kind of Democrat to try and flip it to be safe, but they ended up going to Gusto, but it doesn't look like that's going to benefit them in 2022, at least. Here, we do want to talk about Nebraska here, because it does carry an electoral vote in the 2nd District, that Biden won by 6, Don Bacon was able to win re-election by 5. It looks like he's not going to have any problems the presidential election on that district will be interesting, though. Oh, no. So, the states with proposed maps that have been accepted, I'll talk about them last because they still deserve a full analysis. And, yeah, so Sharice Davids looks like in a R plus 3 seat, going to be much more um, hard for him, her to win real election. It's a seven point more Republican seat. But, yeah, he, she could still win, though I see her probably to lose, at least in 2022. Maybe not in 2024 if he runs for re um for a non-consecutive term though. So for the state of Texas, I mean you don't really see too much of a change in terms of partisan control, but a lot of these seats just get shored up for the Republicans: Michael T. Call, John Carter, Chip Roy, um Tony Gonzalez, um you know Troy Dina. I know, Jake Elzey, Van Taylor, m most of them aren't going to get shored up here. And for the Democrats, they also get their district shored up. For example, in the Dallas area, I believe one of those she seats get shored up. Um, Let me see. So zooming in, it is Colin Allred seat that gets shored up. Going to Houston, it is the seat that's going to show up for the Democrats, and two of these seats will get showed up for the Democrats, especially the 34th district, which is going to have a special election pretty soon. Now, going to some other states here, Louisiana, some talk about some a Democrat possibly being elected to a second seat there. Not, um, not going to happen, though, given what we already know. Minnesota, not much to change in Minnesota here. It's going to remain 44, maybe. It could go 5 to, uh, five to 3 for the Republicans. Depends on 2024. I'm not very sure, though. In my last projection, I did have Andre Craig, I believe, winning, but now I have her losing. Um, Yeah, so looking at finally, so we have made about half of the country. Now we're going to go to the state of Illinois. Indiana, we don't have much to say except one of those districts get short up for the Republicans. Um, the state of Illinois, an atrocious Democratic gerrymander. This is one of those hard hitters gerrymanders on the Democratic side. Um, they sh stretch up this district. They basically stretch the Republican and they consolidated the Republican support in three districts. They short up the 17th district in a very atrocious way to win their power here. And the second district, you can see, stretches into a lot of rural conservative areas. It's still D plus 34, so it doesn't look like a crack, but it honestly is compared to the old map, at least. So yeah, um, I'm going to be going to the state of Wisconsin here as well. Again, this video will be a detailed analysis. Um, Brian Steele's district, much more competitive. But Ron Kine's district stays relatively similar. It barely changes, just look at this. 
yeah, barely, very nearly changes the borders here. Um, looking at Michigan here, Michigan's in the legation, um, looks like decently similar in terms of partisan length, though the Republicans lose two seats, leading towards them one more highly competitive and one seat that just is gone from the state of Michigan. Again, we look at, um, we look at these districts here. Republicans still have these two pick up opportunities. They will probably almost certainly pick up the 10th. They still have the 7th and the 8th possibly to pick up. The Democrats probably have the opportunity in the 4th, though it's not very likely given that it is still a R plus 9 seat, but they do probably have a very good chance of flipping Peter Major's seat in 2024 or 2026. Especially in 2026, I'd say. Probably not 2022, though. It is a D plus 3 seat, though, and probably Biden would have won the state seat by over 5 points. Now, um, looking at, finally, um, looking at some of the other states here, we go to the very populated New England area, and we also have these states such as Georgia. We're going to first look at Georgia here in legation. Going to pass here, it basically just gives... Um, these two Democratic seats, uh, these two seats currently held by Democratic incumbents, it, it, it only basically gives the Democrats one more seat now. One of them is shored up for the Republicans, R plus 24, this district also gets two points more competitive, though the incumbent will definitely win re-election. Um, I'm going to skip Florida for just about Tennessee. We did see this map basically get cracking down Jim Cooper, the Democrat, going to lose re-election, but really nothing to talk about there. Kentucky, I'm going to be talking about Ohio, though, because Ohio, you know, it's interesting, the courts are basically struck down a map, Republicans, and then just draw another map with minimal change, and then Democrats strike, um, Republicans strike down, the courts struck down the map again, and the Republicans go back to the drawing board, they draw a similar map, so in the end, the courts decide, yeah, we're just going to go with it. Again, the, it's still less favoring for Democrats compared to OMAD. Democrats lose one seat. Republicans also actually lose one seat here. But honestly, I think it's the first district. But honestly, really, like, they're still going to win this map, map in the end. They're still going to win. Ohio, I think they're only going to have two seats that they're not going um, There's two seats they're going to lose. I think the... Let me see... The original proposal, I think it's previously enacted proposal, that's right. So it is much better for the Republicans compared to this new proposal. And when I mean much, I mean slightly, but really, it looks like it's still pretty favoring for the Republicans here. So good news for the Republicans in Ohio. Pennsylvania, this map is, I'd say, decently fair. Democrats have six seats. Republicans have, looks like, eight seats, though there is a Democratic incumbent in one of those seats, and he won in R plus nine seats, so her, his district is actually more competitive. There's some three seats here. It's pretty obvious Brian Free Patrick will win the election. Susan Meyer probably loses as well. Connor Lamb running for Senate probably also loses. But yeah, so this is going to be the map in Pennsylvania. Now, looking at some other races here. Um... We still have a couple of interesting states. Virginia, two competitive seats. Um, really, you know, there's two light red seats, but they're not going to be super competitive. Actually, Jennifer Waxton possibly being a competitive seat. It is, after all, four points more Republican. But still, it's a D plus eight seat, so D plus eight is still very decently blue. Um, going to have Abigail Spangerberger, his her seat, it does look like Republicans may have a problem flipping that seat, though. Alright, there it's in the Virginia suburbs. This seat has been more Democratic, but um, counteracting this the second district in which it's the incumbents almost certainly going to lose re-election. Okay, so, we, um, you've heard me talk about... about we're districting for quite a long time. We're, pro we're going to go to the end now. So for North Carolina, Democrats have gained a seat. Republicans have lost a seat. And one more highly competitive seat is added. Now this map will be redrawn uh, probably in 2022. So this is only going to be a two-year map that the courts will draw. And there will be some North Carolina um, 
Supreme Court elections that could tip control to this map to the Republicans. But right now, this is how it looks, and it does not look set to change. In this two years again, it's in litigation, but it's probably going to change by 2022. Okay, I've already pressed on Pennsylvania. Let me see. So, again, um, there's a state, this this map in Maryland here. I do want to focus on a little bit. Because there was a previously enacted Democratic proposal, which was a very un- um, unfair proposal, I guess. You can see this one map. It was previously enacted. It is now rejected by a judge who also drew a new map right now, if I'm not mistaken. I actually tweeted about this new map. You can see that on my Twitter my Twitter link. Uh, my Twitter profile will be linked down in the description down below. But this does effectively give Andy Harris his seat. This also gives David Throne probably leasing real action in 2022. The Democrats could possibly flip it back in 2024. Not very likely, though. And yeah, so this map is a heck a lot fairer than the previous map. It's still only about, on average, Democrats get 80% of the seats, the Republicans get 20%, but still more fair than this map, which is. Um, the old map, which is 87.5% to the Democrats, and more fair than this compared to this map, which gives the Democrats on average 90% of the seats, because the first district could very well flip in a very much blue wave environment. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm getting tired as well. I'm just going to look at two more maps. The state of New Jersey, again, approved. It is a pretty Democratic gerrymander, c- considering this map. Is supposed to be drawn by a commission. It was drawn by a commission, but it looks like the commission has ger- gerrymandered the map again. The only good news is Republicans are almost certainly going to flip the some district. The incumbent here is in a D plus four district. He only won by one point two points. So in the D plus three district, in a R plus what a couple points environment, he, that incumbent is looking certain to lose. We finally have New York. I heard on Ready Go Politics stream that this map was struck and down, but the problem is that is probably not true because I did not see any more news about the state of New York and its map being struck and down. It is in litigation, but that probably doesn't mean it's getting struck and down. I'm not super sure. Someone could comment down what actually what status this map is actually in, or is it still in litigation? I don't really know. But this map is the Democratic gerrymander. It gives the Democrats three more seats. I mean, the Democrats already has have a, um, I guess unfair representation a bit. It's in New York. I mean, Republicans in the old map. I think they still only get thirty percent representation of state that Trump got forty percent, close to forty percent of the vote in. The Democrats only get I think less. The Republicans get less than thirty percent representation on average. Now this map. Gives the Republicans, what, four seats, really. Because these two seats all lean Democrat. And this is given in a, um, in a pretty much even national environment. So, this map basically gives Republicans less than 20% representation. Which is, again, unfair. But, yeah, I think it's 17%. The old map is 27%, if I remember that correctly. So, yeah, so pretty gerrymandered map there. So, what is the main... um? And also, we have, to have, again, three more states. New Hampshire. Governor Chris Nunu is now vetoing the Republican map. It's basically going to look pretty similar compared to the old map. It looks like that's going to be the case. Unless Chris Nunu somehow changes his mind miraculously, which is unlikely. And then, look at the state of Missouri here. Um... Really, it's going to be a 2 some map. Not much of a change except one of those districts shoring, shored up for the um, Republicans from a district that is R plus 8 to a district that is probably about R plus 13 or 14 or 15. So somewhere in the ballpark of that. Florida, though, Ron DeSantis is speedling basically any new maps that not being Trumpian enough. But the Florida Redistricting Committee... Um, you know, the Florida House redistricting, their all their maps were tabled 
and most of them were rejected. For example, the newest map that was rejected, this map, again, I believe Ron Santos probably vetoed it. I'm not so sure, but my assumption is that Ron Santos vetoed it. But right now, it's just failing to have a map. I think the courts are actually drawing this map, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, probably the courts will be drawing this map. I think it is, actually. So, yeah, the courts drawing this map. And um, let's see in the end how this go all goes. So, right now, Democrats are favored, um, favorite, uh, and getting some, getting to be favored in this these new maps. We'll have to see in the end. Anyways, thanks for watching. Do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Do follow me on Twitter. Do watch more of my videos. If you're like I have, you gave me so much suggestions what to do. Well, that's all up to yourself. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Bye.